Hello and welcome to the super colorful original telecommunicated transmission, otherwise known as Scottcast, broadcasting live on uh, Friday night. Well, we're not live, but with Ian Dixon. I mean, we're live. We are live. We're doing good. I'm doing great. I've got we've got this new setup. I've decided to open up the studio a little bit more. Doesn't it look wonderful? It's nice to see a window. It's nice to see a window. It's not as prison like. It's not as prison like. It's good. It's got curtains. We have room to be, come around and to do this. Kyle's got room to roam around. It's pretty good. I'm enjoying myself. I'm enjoying having a nice, clean, organized space. You know what they say, Ian? What do they say? They Well, what they say. Who's they? I think scientists. <laughs> <laughs> Philosophers, maybe. Yeah. Um, Zen masters, too. That's why it's plural. It's all the, any authoritative source you can think of says this. Okay. Falls under capital they, the royal they, if you will. They say that if your, your house <laughs> mimics your mind and your brain mm -hmm. in a way. Like if you have a cluttered, messed up house, you're going to have a cluttered, messed up brain. Your priority is going to be all out of whack. But if your house is all settled and nice mm -hmm. and organized then you're going to be all settled and nice and organized and it's going to be a snowball effect for the rest of your life. So that's why every time you see someone with a clean house, you can tell like, oh, well, they're clearly of a higher income bracket than I am. <laughs> it's a competition to see whose house is the cleanest. That's why rich people get bigger and bigger and bigger houses than the other rich people because they can't keep the same amount of area or just more clean at some point. Mm -hmm. Eventually, you just need more square footage to keep clean. So the more square, the more square footage you can keep clean and maintain, the more rich you are. Well, that's because you can pay people to clean it. That's also true. <laughs> it's a bit of an affluence thing. <laughs> how clean can you be? How difficult is it for you to be clean? And how clean are you? That's the rating. For me, it's not very difficult and not very clean. Mm -hmm. So I have a lower social stratosphere here I'm working with. Okay. But I'm on my way up. I'm up a bunch. Okay. I'm like maybe a bump or two. Have you ever cleaned a house? <laughs> <laughs> I suppose I have. Isn't it the best feeling in the world, like, once you get into it? Uh, sure. Like, once you're into the flow state of cleaning? I find that it's hard to stop once I start. That's right. The, both like, the momentum's like there. Pringles. Yeah. Once you pop, the fun don't stop. That's right, except it's with chemicals. <laughs> you doing, like, a feng shui thing, too? Is it... Like, how does the, the organization transfer to your brain? Well, the organization transfers to your brain a little bit, I guess, like feng shui in the sense that I try to organize everything in my house so that it all makes sense and it's easy. Because mm -hmm. my house was mostly just tiptoeing around things mm -hmm. and finding awkward routes to wherever you need to go. But now it's more thoroughfare-like. Like, you can get from one room to the next room in my house, like, lickety-split. <laughs> This house is a, like a well-designed machine. Definitely use, usability-focused. That's important. That's right. So I got that going for me. But I also think that the house and the house you inhabit is a metaphor for your mind and your internal state in more metaphorical ways. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me more. A, more. a metaphor in more metaphorical ways. Like my front room for a year solid i just used it as storage i didn't know how to use it i kept it i kept exercise equipment that i never used in it mm -hmm. like boxes uh just trash accumulated <laughs> <laughs> it's it's it, the my goodbyes and any anytime someone came over the goodbye would be like so it would start halfway in the house where that room started. True. And then it would awkwardly dawdle through the dark, through this part of the house that's just storage uh, to the front of the house. Mm -hmm. And I swear it has discouraged more people from coming by again than any other factor. Just that awkward extra walk. Because the goodbye walk is supposed to be just a couple steps, you close the door behind you. But in this house, when they didn't have that front room, it was just a big hallway of junk. Mm -hmm. 
the goodbye walk was a good 30 feet. That's too many feet for a goodbye walk. Yeah. One of the reasons you mentioned anyway that you kept the front room kind of junky was uh, to avert crime, right? You had like the weight set right by the window and it was just piles of shit and maybe someone comes by and peeks through the window and they're like, oh, it's a hoarder house. Fuck that. I'm not going to rob them. It's a bunch of junk. But now it's like all neat and clean and nice and you might be opening yourself up to uh, to being a victimized that's a good point, but here's the <laughs> here's the difference in my philosophies. In the one situation with the hoarder, it looked like I had a lot of stuff. So it almost worked against me. And now I'm thinking if I have everything clean and put away and tidy, when people look in, they'll be like, There's nothing in here. What is this this guy is a, this guy is a monk over here. He doesn't have anything. Let's let's rob that guy over there who has more stuff. Mm-hmm. So now the strategy is to make yourself more sparse. And then that's that's how you make sure that no one steals your stuff. Okay. I might not broadcast any of this stuff stealing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that seems like you're just begging. Hey, by the way, I don't have a home security system. <laughs> Do you like any of these things you see in Scottcast? If so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, just throwing it out there. Please email me <laughs> and tell me when you're about to rob me. So, I think it's secure. I think it's still secure. Yeah. It, it helps to, because this room is still very sparse. It's got, right now, it's got like all the film equipment and stuff in it to get the podcast going. But when uh, when the room is just by itself, it's it's literally just this little table in this huge room. So it just looks like nothing. It looks like maybe two people live here who argue with each other often. <laughs> okay. Silently. And that kind of introverted kind of we'll argument. We'll talk more about two people arguing with each other later. Oh, that's right. You know what that brings me to? The Scott Cast email bag. That's right. I'm excited for the Scott Cast email bag. This, this, uh, this, uh, how do you say? Episode. Mm-hmm. This episode, episode 15 of the Scott Cast email bag. I'm excited. But I don't think you should be excited. Well, maybe you should. I don't be. know what to expect. You talked it up oh. like it was a big deal. I did talk it up. I was on the social media talking it up. And we got two emails. One of the emails you're going to like, one of the emails you're not going to like. Which one do you want to hear first? Let's start with bad news. Okay. Bad news first. Bat Nipple writes in. Mm-hmm. No, he's not hurt. But he's got something that might hurt Ian's feelings. Bat Nipple is Team David, Ian. That is kind of painful. He writes in, sorry, Ian, nothing against you, but Master Charles is Team David. It's just, I mean, it's... it's Did he give uh, a rationale for that? He didn't give much rationale, but I'm going to assume it's because uh, David went to the same high school as Master mm-hmm. Charles. So he's, he's like, doing this, like, homeboy kind of thing. I see. Where it's like, oh, this person and I have the same background, so let's stick together. I thought he might be a little sour at me because I thought he was Chris O'Donnell. Perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> It's not the best celebrity to be compared to. I mean, he's kind of, he's got his 90s. Yeah. He's got his 90s edge with his little earring stud and all, but, and his short haircut. But he's not the best. I mean, what has he, what has he done besides Batman and Robin? I couldn't tell you. Right? I don't know why we know Chris O'Donnell and like (laughs) a lot about him. Like I can picture him perfectly in my head, but I've never seen him outside of that very just just two roles as robin yeah i think it's because there was no nolan robin there's no christopher nolan robin true i thought what's his face was like suggested that he would be robin um i'm blanking on his name he was in third rock from the sun 
I don't even know. Because they didn't really Inception? focus it. I don't know. I haven't seen any of these things that you're saying. I haven't seen God Inception. Damn. I haven't seen Third Rock from the Sun. Not working. So. I'm just going to shout his name out later. And you're going to be like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Screw that guy. <laughs> Calm down, Kyle. So that was the bad news. Okay. You're you you you're not everyone's fan favorite apparently. Well, you know, one of the OG fans has spoken. Yeah. Fan of David. But this next one, this next email I have claims that you are the fan favorite. Their okay. fan favorite. And not even because of your work on Scottcast. Okay, so I have so I have the do I, so I have the letter. They said, Ian, you're our fan favorite. I only tune in to episodes where you're listed as part of the episode. But I was digging around on your uh, fan pages online, mm-hmm. and I found some questionable literature that you've <laughs> authored. Uh-oh. Um, they included a little limerick. Mm-hmm. Attributed to Ian Dixon, I want you to let me know what you think, because uh, this person's—they only have one question. What the heck? And they—they're gonna want an explanation. So here we go, live on Scott Cash. You're gonna explain yourself. All right. There was a man from Saginaw who had an unhingeable jaw. He never did stop when sucking the cock until even balls were in his maw. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like at the last part you didn't even like care about the structure of this. <laughs> poem you were just like balls in the maw <laughs> gotta put it in there <laughs> <laughs> gotta, gotta include that why why what is what what inspired this this literature well it was part of a collection of dirty limericks okay and i happened to be from saginaw so that was they were michigan cities they were based on michigan cities mm-hmm. so that's uh went for that so you're from saginaw so so Mm. you had what what is the relationship from between saginaw and unhingeable jaw is it just a rhyme or is it a personal experience just a rhyme i'm afraid oh it would be an exciting story if it was a personal experience but right sorry i was kind of excited when i saw this letter i was hoping (laughs) hoping (laughs) i was hoping that (laughs) I was hoping that uh, you uh, had some sort of had a story in there, some some situation with an unhingeable jaw. Sorry, it should be. This is you gotta understand. That's the conclusion of our email segment, and right now we're being lapped by the Tim and Drew show. Like they're on what? episode four, and they already have a celebrity coming onto their podcast. Some sort of comedian who's been on Comedy Central presents or something. Mm-hmm. Why can't we get celebrities? Why can't we? I don't know. Who should we get? We need a celebrity. Who's, whose cast is this, Scott? The Scott cast. <laughs> <laughs> well, step up your game. What do you mean? I got to step up. Well, like, help me out here, co-host. Just because you get one person who's not who who's more of a fan of David. Like, you just give up everything. Give up all brainstorming duties. Come on. Just because well, just, just cause, just cause you got a little bit of ire. Just because it's not 100% bad 100 Ian anymore. David's fan is like a consistent fan. He, he doesn't only listen to cast with David. That's true. My fan here says only Ian casts. That's right. So That's I'm, right. I'm that bringing in the listeners. Yeah. Of our 12, like. Yeah, of the 12, <laughs> like if we average it out and if I only you had cut David Ian, out, we're not really losing anybody. Cut David out and technically we're gaining a listener per episode <laughs> that they would be on. I don't know. I, I want to see what I want to see how the numbers ha- work on this idea I've had because we you have a cuz here's the here's how we're going to combat Tim and Drew getting a celebrity. That's the stupidest thing, right? Like, first off, they don't have a reach. I'm their only listener. They're not interesting enough to get listeners on there. They got to bring in 
yeah. celebrities. They got they're not interesting enough to bring in listeners besides myself, so they're trying to they're they're trying to ride onto the coattails of whoever they can reach on Twitter. I actually really enjoyed the the episode with Yeah, it was a good <laughs> That was but, we're talking about Drew from episode fourteen. He was he's a, he was a great guest. Uh, but you know he's got a terrible podcast, and that's the, <laughs> that's what I'm trying to put out here. And so where they're just going to have a celebrity who's apparently recording sometime in May. What I'm going to do is I'm going to see this conflict between you, Ian, David, and I'm going to exploit this feud for the benefit of our listeners. Are you guys excited? Not back home? Yeah, both of you. Yeah, that's right. I, is the applause is deafening. I love it. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to settle this feud. Mm-hmm. Because Scott Cass needs to know who's going to succeed Scott. Scott Cass needs to know who's who who really is second banana. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Versus no banana. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to f- have a game show. David, Ian, episode 16, hopefully, maybe 17, depends, possibly 18, before 20, before 20, we will do an episode of uh, where, where we'll, David and Ian will compete together to see who is the greatest Scott Cast co-host. Everyone bookmark, bookmark your shit. You know what's today's episode sponsored by? Who is it sponsored by? Today's episode is sponsored by Audible.com. That's right. Go to Audible and get yourself a free ebook just by doing this. You go to www, right? And then you go to dot audibletrial.com, right? And then you forward slash Scottcast. So put it all together www.audibletrial.com forward slash Scottcast. And you get a free audiobook just for signing up. And you get to support Scott Cass. That's so easy. That's so easy. And you don't you don't have to you can cancel any time. Right? Heavily lean on cancel any time. <laughs> says the show notes. Go do that right now. Sign up. Not everyone cancel. should do that. If you don't do that, Scott Cass might not survive. That's right. So you gotta do that. It's our only revenue stream. Except for when we send Ian down under a bridge somewhere in Detroit. So if you don't want to, <laughs> if you don't want to send Ian out under a bridge servicing fellas to keep Scott Cat's lights on. Don't make me do that again. <laughs> All you have to do is sign up <laughs> for www.audibletrial.com forward slash Scott we watched some great TV this week, didn't we? Great? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was great. I thought it was wonderful. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yes. I was pretty convinced that I had traumatized you. Well, you did. <laughs> <laughs> but it was great. It was a great traumatization. We watched two films. Uh, the one film was a trauma film entitled Poultry Geist. That was wonderful. I traumatized. I got traumatized, which is great. <laughs> Good old Lloyd Kaufman. Uh, it's a film about um, a fast food restaurant that gets built on an a- a- Indian burial ground. Let's say it's a, it's a very political movie in the sense it's all about being like fast food's wrong, and uh, the ca- the system is exploiting the f- workers and the animals. And the ghosts of uh, the Indian burial ground. So the Indian burial ground haunts the chickens, which proceed to murder and uh, kill the entire town of Tromaville, who all happened to come to the chicken shack that day. Oh, it was a grand opening. It was a grand opening. It was a great little little town. So So I'm interested to hear your thoughts, because... My thoughts. I've seen it a number of times, but I know it's always it's always good to get a fresh take on on these things. With uh, there was a lot of 
things going in and out of butts. And... Yeah, the butt was a th- <laughs> the thoroughfare of the movie. Most most active plot changes happen because something went into a butt, or through a butt, <laughs> or out of a butt. Like the first big plot change is the main character's motivation, which is he falls in love with a lady, and he falls in love with a lady because uh, when when they're copulating in a graveyard, uh, a lot of zombie hands reach up and you know they start adding to the fun, if you will, and one of these bits of human ends up lodged in an erogenous zone on the male, which makes him feel like the lady he was with was doing that stuff, which opened up a lot of new territory for him. And when she went away to college and became a lesbian, he became really disappointed and decided he needed to find a way to either show her up or show her that he's a man and that he deserves... He deserves love. It's convoluted, but it gets him work in this cash register. Yeah. Right. So I think that's that's the summation of the main character. I have a few questions for you. Okay. When you're when you pick a movie out like Poultry Geist after someone tells you, you know, I'm <laughs> I, I feel a little queasy today. I don't wanna <laughs> I don't really wanna get anything too graphic. Let's not do Pink Flamingo. You got something a little bit less than that. And you're like, how about a step down? I'm like, okay, a step down, sure. What makes you pick the movie with several cases of explosive diarrhea and of course anal impaling it's a step down from pink flamingo i i gave you what you asked for (laughs) yeah but how granular are your steps like is it really a step down is pink flamingo actually worse than that uh i mean it was a constant onslaught of things exploding and and yeah i sexually being murdered I explicitly asked you about explosive diarrhea. I told you right. that someone shits themselves inside out. Is and you were he... like, if it's not real poop, I'm okay. Okay. I guess. <laughs> you're right. You're right. I did say that. <laughs> I, this, is a, this is a classic case of... I think my, my thumb is a little off the pulse of what's normal. Yeah, this is just a case of me just being too much of a baby. <laughs> just, just handle handle your trauma films like a man, Scott. That's what that's what I that's what I need to start doing, and that's that's the old. I think one of my favorite parts about Poultry Geist mm-hmm. is when is at the beginning of the film because you you had some special DVD edition, which it must have been some copyright like digital rights protected version because the first what 10 minutes of it is uh is like a little short movie about lloyd kaufman being angry about people pirating (laughs) movies and saying that people in china who pirate movies should probably uh commit suicide (laughs) he didn't he heavily no he would never say that he never did say that (laughs) never said that (laughs) outright that was my favorite part, I think. Even though the rest of the movie was good. Mm-hmm. I like I like Lloyd Kaufman as a character. He's a fun guy. Yeah, you met him a few yeah. times. Well, once. Once. You you met him and you had to you you brought you tricked him though. I got to say from the story I heard, you well, tricked Lloyd Kaufman. You 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 asked him to sign one of your things. You brought like a slew of DVDs. Yeah. And he was like, "Which one?" And you said, the one you're proud of. I said, which are you most proud of? Which are you, which are you most proud of? And he just like started signing everything. You're asking the man to pick a child. Well. On the heat of the spur of the moment. Of course, I, of course not. And then you run away. And how much did you eBay that stuff for? <laughs> I still have all of those things. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I guess that makes it slightly better that you kept stuff. But if you want to donate to Scott Cast, I can uh, uh, send you something. 
Check a, <laughs> check the eBay channel. Freud's cranium is a snail seller, <laughs> Michigan. <laughs> and uh, just subscribe to updates on that channel to see if uh, you can get some Lloyd Kaufman merchandise real quick. <laughs> <laughs> get some Scott Cast scratch before I send him back under the bridge. What are your thoughts about the special effects? Because I know we've talked about the terribleness of modern CGI and the the greatness of of kind of the practical effects of yesteryear. This one had practical effects, right? Because it was made mm-hmm. in like the eighties with Drew Barrymore it was as like a four prob- year old. Yeah, eighties, early nineties. Okay, probably more so eighties. Okay, I don't, I don't know the actual year. I like the little troll guy. Mm-hmm. He was fun to hate. I wanted to see his demise the entire time, <laughs> and that was good. And I don't think that would have happened with like one of those generic uh, CGI, like Pixar kind of characters they they make nowadays. Those smooth faced things. They all look like someone made them in a flash animation. Yeah, I don't like that kind of thing. But I do like these practical effects because they they look. Here's the deal, and I think this is why they came, they came out of fashion. The thing doesn't look isn't nice to look at. Yeah, it's not a nice troll to look at. It's like, oh, it's a very off-putting little creature, and it's moving, and doesn't it disturbs you to look at it? And the new CGI stuff, it's it's designed to be like not a, it's designed to be like as if it was real, mm-hmm. and so it's not as disturbing to look at. I feel like, like it's too smooth. It's too, it's too just stamped on there. Yeah, I think it. <clears throat> the CGI kind of has has this tendency to be a little too perfect kind of like if you see somebody who's had a lot of plastic surgery yeah and like yeah too symmetrical like we're we're imperfect beings and and if if things are too too right on something's wrong and your brain picks up on that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's why I like to keep Scott Cast a somewhat low quality pro- production mm-hmm. because I don't want people to think I'm too perfect. They might recognize that you are actually a robot. I just want, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to look a little perfect, you know, just perfect enough to warrant having my own show named after me, but not so perfect. That it ruins people's conception of reality. So you I think to have that illusion. Yeah, what really got me going with Cat's Eye is that the main cat in it looked just like my cat Kyle the cat, and this cat was an awesome cat. This cat did everything it needed to do to be awesome. It 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 chased after this stupid little troll creature, messed with it. It climbed down, climbed up and down chimneys and stuff. And the mom just hated this cat for some reason and just hated, she just hates cats. But this cat didn't care. This cat's like getting stabbed and all, but he's still like, Drew Barrymore, I'm going to come save you. And he does. He he somehow knows the troll is going to come out and get Drew Barrymore. But he escapes the animal shelter, runs for miles, climbs up a house, goes down. I don't care. I'm giving it away. (laughs) Runs down a chimney. And when that little stupid little troll thing is sitting there stealing breath or whatever, he's like, meow, meow. and then the troll's like, ah, ah. <laughs> and, and the cat's like, no, meow, meow. and it's like a good 10 minute scene, but it's like edge of your seat entertaining. Yeah. Edge of your seat action. This, this cat fending away this troll. And then eventually the troll somehow flings across the room and lands into some industrial fan that is way overpowered because it just shreds this thing into a puree like like a, like a Nutribullet on steroids. It's a great film. It is a wonderful film. Cat's Eye. It's a Stephen King novel. A thing that you mentioned that caught my, that caught my ire is I mentioned that, oh, look at this, look at this jerk Stephen King. Mm-hmm. He's, got, uh, he, he's got this character reading a book in bed and he's reading a Stephen King book. Mm -hmm. Why would you put your own book in your own movie? Come on, you've got to plug yourself in your own thing. And then you were like, what's it like to watch someone with as big of an ego as you? (laughs) I didn't say it that dickishly. (laughs) But you implied it. (laughs) 
<laughs> That's what you meant. Oh. We all know. Can't hide it. I mean, I'm sorry. You should be sorry. It's unacceptable. I don't know what else to say to that. No heartfeltness, nothing. Just, just, I'm sorry. Whatever. Can we get to the next segment, <laughs> Scott? I got to get home. <laughs> well, what do you, what kind of comfort do you need? I want, I want you to be like, look, Scott Cass isn't just an ego trip. Scott Cass isn't just, just some guy with an elaborate mirror. Yeah. Scott Cass means something to people. Scott Cass brings people together. Scott Cast is the warmth in some people's day. Scott Cast is the light in some people's eye. Scott Cast isn't just the meanderings of one crazy man. Scott Cast is the meanderings of all men. This is what we are. The zeitgeist, the spirit of man himself. As we become homo technicus. <laughs> The epiphany that is our evolution. That is what Scott Cast is. That's what Scott Cast cares about. Something like that. Say something like that. Ditto. Ah. All right. We're out of content. Damn. It was a very short cast. It was. I need to I need to do more content planning. I've been doing too much actual work. Not enough what focus on my fake job. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you work harder at this job that doesn't bring in any money? I don't know. Maybe if people started up for Audible, I'd be able to find an hour or two to come up with a segment. Like Tim and Drew Show, they got good segment ideas and they got good things planned, but they just never record. Like one of the things that they have planned and they're thinking about including me in it somehow, but mm -hmm. it'll be a little awkward because I'm in Detroit and they're in Georgia. Mm -hmm. But they're going to do a dating show full-on dating show i'm single to, ready to mingle now so like i can't bring you and david's apparently got some new boo according to scott cast episode something mm -hmm. so we can't bring him so i'm like the only eligible bachelor who can go on to a dating show but i can still tag team my co-hosts for like hey i need i didn't know the answer to a question what kind of what do dating shows even have? Isn't it is it trivia? I don't That's know. That's what I was imagining. I think it's trivia. more like personality test kind of questions. Like what? So I don't know if I could help you with that. Yeah, you can. You could be like, okay, so this person wants this kind of personality. Well, I can tell you what to tell someone, but That's that, what I want to know. That wouldn't help you in the long term. I don't want the long term. <laughs> I just want to defeat Tim and Drew at their own stupid game. Well shit. And that's where your psychology background can come in handy for manipulation. <laughs> <laughs> well, what did we tell our, our friend in the last cast, the lost cast? Um, we had someone who was having struggles with the ladies. No, that wasn't the lost one. That wasn't one, it? No, that one was Geeky to Freaky. Yeah. That wasn't lost. That was published, episode okay. 12. There you go. So we told him to that he should not try to put on some air. And to, and to be himself in a way. No. Oh. But also, also to tell people he has a big penis. <laughs> <laughs> Not explicitly though. Yeah, yeah. Subtly. Metaphorically, tell people you have a big penis. Yeah. Like you had a username that said my dick is a monster. Subtly. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I don't know how I would say I have a big penis without saying I have a big penis. That'll probably just be my username for if you if you want to OK Cupid me, <laughs> okcupid dot com forward slash I have a big penis. I have a feeling that's taken. Or it wouldn't surprise me if it was. It wouldn't surprise me either. I'm not gonna get that. That's too. I'm not. I'm gonna actually censor that. Yeah. I don't want I don't want anybody to know if I have an okay cupid or if it's or if it happens to be that. Fair enough. Mm hmm 
So, anyways, I could be on a I could be on a dating show, and I could use your services to help manipulate people in the short term. But if you're actually following on my advice, it was to be yourself and not to manipulate people. Yeah, but I want to know how to manipulate people into thinking that I'm doing that. <laughs> <laughs> That would be an ethical quandary for me. <laughs> Why? <laughs> what's 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 unethical about manipulating people into thinking that you're being genuine? How would that benefit you or the other person? Anyone in the situation? I would get to lord over the Tim and Drew show <laughs> <laughs> that I defeated them at their own little dating game. We can just legit defeat the Tim and Drew show, though. Yes, with your help manipulating the competition, we can legitimately defeat the Tim <laughs> and Drew show. I don't think you're understanding the super villain podcast vibe I'm trying to put out there. I can see you're all about the manipulation. Not all about it, just when, <laughs> just when I need to destroy a podcast. Well, I don't manipulate you. I just ask you to do it for other for other people. You just make me go under a bridge and do things. I don't make you do Unspeakable that. Unspeakable things. I just say, hey, our audible numbers are down. Go to this bridge. <laughs> make some money. I don't tell you how to make the money. You're the one who gets creative. <laughs> Whatever helps you sleep at night. <laughs> yeah, I sleep all through the night <laughs> Unlike some people So, okay That's what we're going to do Is We're going to have a game show uh, Coming up soon With David versus Ian To see who's the best co-host for Scott Cass So stay tuned to that In the meantime Be on the lookout for the Tim and Drew show I might show up on that to tell them what's what And sign up for the Scott Cass Legion To get updates Sign up for the Scottcast Legion by going to scottcast.us in your browser. Or, yeah, just do that. And then and then sign up with your email somewhere on that page. It'll be great. Then you'll get emails, updates when I'm making my pods happen. Because you know you can't mess this stuff. You can't miss this. Yep. So, from everybody... Here at the Super Colorful Originals, how to communicate a transmission, otherwise known as Scott Cast. I bid thee adieu.